Thanks so much for joining us today, Veronica. It's great to have you. Oh gosh, thanks for having me. This is, <laughs> I'm happy to just drop in. No, that, that's great. We're really excited to be able to talk about uh, so so much of your work, so much of your career as a voice actress, not, not just within Pokemon, but kind of spanning genres, animation and, and video games as well. You, you've done so many roles where we're really excited to talk to you about it. Thank you. Um, first up, we're going to talk about your, your uh, arguably your biggest role of all and, and the one most of us are familiar with, and, and that's Ash Ketchum from Pokemon. Yeah. I, well, I mean, who, who hasn't heard of Ash? Um, isn't that amazing? Uh, I mean, this whole Pokemon journey that we've all been on for 25 it, uh, years, my goodness. Uh, it, it has been there since yeah. I, I could pick up a, a controller. So yeah. I, I, I re, really, it's kind of amazing to be able to speak to the voice of, of Ash. <laughs> um, what, what I'm curious about, when you, when you began voice acting in the Pokemon series, did you imagine that your role would have such a huge cultural oh impact? Gosh. No, not at all. I mean, there's, as an actor, I've worked on so many different things before that and since I started working on Pokemon. So um, I, I don't think anyone could have even realized that a show could go on this long, let alone that any characters could have the impact that I think Ash Ketchum has had. I mm. mean, we we journey with him. We are Ash Ketchum. And so totally. the fact that we've been able to to be on this journey as human beings and celebrate and mourn and, you know, everything along with him, it's been, gosh, just extraordinary. It is really special. Like when you yeah. put it like that, it, it's a journey. And yeah. like, we we get to go on that journey with Ash. I yeah. mean, especially for for people like myself kind of growing up alongside him as right. well. Right. Yeah. Right. And that, you know, the everybody has their favorite episode or their favorite game or um their best friend that they've made because of liking Pokemon. There's so many things that we kind of that that weave in and out of our Pokemon experience, you know, that have mm. made the journey such an in incredible part of all of our lives. So much so that I think when you meet someone anywhere, you can start talking about Pokemon, find out what you have in common, and then um, move your friendship on from there. I mean, absolutely, who could have that was possible. You know, no, it, it is a great way to connect and yeah. meet like-minded, sort of passionate people. I, yeah. I mean, I've made many friends because of Pokemon. It's true. Yeah, amazing. So um, have on, I, actually. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you've made yeah. tons all I over mean, the world. Even from this, I first came to Sydney in 2002, and I have seen some kids from 2002. I've seen them through the years, and now, you know, I've seen them at integral parts of their lives of um, getting out of school, getting out of uni, getting their first job, getting married, having kids. I meet their kids. I mean, through all of these years, Amazing. I've made incredible friends. So uh, I feel Just quite like happy. Ash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly the same. Um, on the topic of Ash, uh, I, I'd really like to hear about what are, what is some of your favorite moments from your, your time as a voice of Ash? Gosh, if you can pick. I, yeah, I mean, I think um, when we recorded the episodes, as with most things that I work on, we, you arrive, we haven't seen the script, we jump into the booth, we just start the episode. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you get a small synopsis of what's going to happen, sometimes you don't, but you're really working minute by minute, moment by moment. And when I've left the studio, I don't think I could have told you my favorite moment because you're so in yeah. the middle of it. Yeah. But, um, but some of my favorite episodes that I've seen since, so I really can refresh my memory, um, I think the first episode for sure, because we Magical. see Ash getting up. There's so much packed into that episode and mm. you really see who he is. He, he, he gets nothing that he wants and yet commits himself fully to Pikachu and yep. to this journey that they are now on together. Uh, that's pretty intense. Um, the, also the snow run episode where they're in the cave together, Char, Charmander episode where he finds Charmander who's been left out on the rock. So and I mean, amazing <laughs> stuff. 
things that unfortunately you see in your real life that you can mm. apply to um, whether you find a, a butterfly on the sidewalk, and you rescue it or, you know, to something even bigger where perhaps you adopt a pet or you help a friend, you know, all of that can relate back to some emotional part that appeared in an episode of Pokemon. So mm. um, I think those are my favorite. I love the battles, but but I love the um, the more personal moments that people have together. Yeah, like it's yeah, so relatable that it feels yeah. so real. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, and beyond Ash, um, you you've also played May as well in, yeah. in the Pokemon series. Who who is definitely one of the other main characters, like yeah. uh, across Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, and and yeah. for for seasons of the animation. Yeah. Um, how how did it feel needing to perform the roles of two main characters? Well, I'm only in the first eight seasons of Pokemon, mm. so they replaced us all before uh, yeah. Black and White or Diamond and Pearl, Black and White, I think. Um, yeah. So May had a she had a substantial amount of of time when I played her, and I think mm. the interesting thing that we got from her is that she was someone who was going after her goals, but had so much actual responsibility with her little brother Max. Yeah. But there was a lot to to learn from that. And I think the um, kind of the headspace that they were each in is one of the challenges in playing them because Ash would be, he's so out there and headstrong and doesn't oh, yeah. really have to think about anyone else. Whereas May would have to be doing things, but also have her brother in mind. Um, when we recorded them, we record one character all the way through and then the next yep. character and then the next. So mm -hmm. I didn't have to bounce back and forth in the scene, but I could really invest myself in what each character was going through. So it made yep. it much more of a pleasure to play both. I played Ash's mom also, and sometimes mm. the three of them were in a scene together. Well. <laughs> um, that was pretty great, but it was it's it's nice that way because you really can immerse yourself fully in what the character's going through. Mm. Um, whereas in an audiobook, for instance, or when I worked on Ninja Turtles, you record everything straight through. So yep. if you have in an, an audiobook, you're recording the narrator and then all the characters together. Um, when you're doing prelay, which is when you have the the voices come first and then the animation, we recorded that like a, a radio play. So we yep. still, if you, we still recorded the scenes and we had room to play with the the characters. And if you had two characters, you would just bounce back and forth along the way. That would be very challenging. Challenging, but super fun. Everything's mm. challenging in its own way, as I'm sure your life is also. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, and while we're still on the topic of Pokemon, mm -hmm. if you can choose, because I know there's a lot of Pokemon, which would you have on your team and why? Well, um, I would have to pick Pikachu just because of course. I'd get in trouble if I didn't. I, <laughs> it's hard to, I, I do like the element of surprise. I mean, I think that's one thing that makes the, the card game and also just collecting cards so great because you open a pack and you just mm. get what you get. So I yep. do kind of like that. Um, I'm steering uh, lately more on getting a Mr. Mime on my team okay. because Mr. Mime can pretty much do everything you need around the house. And I think we so all- handy. Kind of yeah, things are so busy nowadays. You need someone to kind of take care of that stuff so you can just get out there and really uh, work on your goals. <laughs> so other than that, um, I might go with the regular starters as well. Oh, the classics. Yeah, classic. Can't go past them. That's right. Right. Thank you. Um, and outside of Pokemon, um, we we bri briefly touched on, on a, a few earlier before we we started the the interview but you you played a lot of other roles in different animated series like yeah. one piece for example which yeah. is huge and yeah. and T teenage mutant ninja turtles which many of us would have grown up watching as well right. um what are some of the lesser known characters within animation that you've voiced that you re really enjoyed. Yeah, well, I did work on a stop action cartoon called Mophy that I think was on here for a while, although mm -hmm. it was never on in the United States. Yep. And um, that is a cartoon that the character is Japanese. The stop action was done in Italy and we recorded the voices oh, wow. in New York and I moved 
in the middle of it, so New York and LA. So it's kind of a cool global project. It's mm. very sweet. It's all made of cotton and um, I just, I love that. It's, it's soft, literally, um, yeah. because like it, the um, situations that the characters get in, it's for younger kids. So they're simple and lovely and they always find a solution. Yeah. So that was a great, I loved working on that. I love stop action. Um, oh, me too. On, yeah, it's just, uh, there's something wonderful. Um, Rilakkuma and Kauru also I work on. I play. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. That oh, and then the that's second. That's great. Uh, there's two seasons of that. So uh, I play the boy. Um, I can't remember his name right now, but I play the boy on that who it befriends uh, Rulakuma. And um, he lives, he's Kaoru's neighbor. Yeah. Um, oh, that's another, Kyo. just such yeah. a popular, like charming yes, character it's so great. And series. Yeah, and that's stop action. And then the second, mm. the second, um, the second season is not, I think it's a little more computer animation to look yep. top action-y, but yep. that's really sweet. That, I do a ton of anime. There's so many animes oh, out right now that have very long names, which are fun. Um, uh, I think the Fire Emblem video games. I'm in Three Houses. I play Manuela and Heroes. I play Makaya. Those I have heard a lot of your voice. I, Did you? I would have would have played a couple hundred hours of three houses. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm happy I could be there with you. Uh, um, Manuela is certainly one of my favorite characters to play ever. Yeah, she's very memorable. He's crazy and crazy fun to record. Yes. So, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's actually what we're going to talk about next. So yeah. good segue. Hey. Um, so yeah you've been involved in a lot of games too um and um we we've reviewed and played fire emblem and all, also you've been in valkyrie profile that's right yeah which, which is a, a a classic um if you can pick like you you've already mentioned manuela um which video game role has been your favorite so far um you know i got to do um in dragon ball super i played the brian ribrian and so i got to play brian or actually more ribrian in the video game as well mm. but that and that was both the show and the video game are super fun because she's yeah. just bouncing along fighting with love and yeah. I, I just love that <laughs> um but i think um ultimately i was um cosmos in a one of the it's always hard for me to think of what i've been in because it's mm. all so you know i don't think about the time a lot. So much it's just what's it, what's coming down the line um yeah. in final fantasy for that um and that was really great the um that is was one of the slowest speaking roles i've ever had and she's so powerful and mm. yet it it all had to match the timing of the original japanese version of the, ah, of the game so yep. that kind of thing where you're just you're working on your piece and then you're waiting for all of the uh we recorded that in la and then people were in japan and they were going back and forth and there's all yep. the notes going by that you can't hear and then you have to redo the line that was uh -huh. that was a cool project to be part of um mm. but certainly manuel is my favorite all-time role because yep. he's so she has so many levels she's so smart so talented and so needy so she's and she lays it out on the line every every line of hers is just Definitely. out there and i just and love that she she has so much development throughout the game as well i i think when you're initially playing three houses you have this perception of what manuel is like you're you're like oh yes the, this is what her character is like but yeah. the more you play the more you you level up your support with her you really find out like she she has so much more to her her character yeah, yeah. and they mm. it, what a lovely part of that is that they write that in also you mm. know she would be nothing without none of us would be anything without good writers that's so true that, and that they can structure it so that as an actor, I can imagine and kind of imbue other layers to it. But when it's written there for you and the people who are directing it are like, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's, you know, we all kind of work together to create 
a more well-rounded character mm. than just flat lines and that's and you're you're bringing it to life yeah yeah and that's really great and with those we we could really bring her very far and then reel it back in <laughs> yep. she, has, she has some scenes where um it was really fun to play. <laughs> you, you have to realize it's still on a Nintendo console. So totally right. So totally I can't right. go too far. No, yep. you really can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and while we're still talking video games, yeah. um, if you could pick a dream game to be involved in, what, what do you think it would be? Well, um, I think right now, anything Star, Star Wars, Marvel, mm -hmm. the the dream about that is that that too has so many different levels and your character could then be in a, a whole different, um, its own game, you know, and it can, you, those things have a longevity that so many other games don't because the story arcs are so I intense. And mm. um, so I, I would think something like that I would love to do because you, as an actor, there is a, a huge luxury, like with Pokemon, to have a long time to really live in the character and yep. many games are just a like a one and done in a sense yep. so i would rather be part of something like that that really lives in a world and you can you can pull in so much of your own knowledge into your session so that it it becomes i don't know so much greater than even what it was on the page originally mm. I feel like that sounds a little bit like your time with Ash. Like you, you yeah. did, you did have several years to kind of grow and and yeah. evolve alongside him. Like you could bring so much of yourself to the role because of that. Right. I mean, it, I've never had a job for eight years like I did with Pokemon, and that was yeah. extraordinary. And so, yeah, mm. you can because then you you just kind of know what's going to happen because it's written and drawn that way. So yeah. that you can just be in the moment even more so. And mm. it's, yeah, it's pretty great. Well, I hope to hear your voice again in maybe Star Wars or, or Marvel hey. at some All point right. in the future. That, I'm available. That... I'm available. So. <laughs> oh, that would be excellent. Yeah. Um, and for, for yourself with so much experience doing voice acting, so many different roles, you, you've, you've done voice acting for, for how long? Gosh, I think I probably had my first cartoon, I guess, maybe 1996, mm -hmm. um, 90, uh, I don't know. I've been, I've been an actor for longer than that, but yeah. maybe mostly voice related from 96, maybe 90 mm. or maybe, yeah, let's say, let's just say 96 for today. Let's leave yep. it. There. Yeah, that, that's fine. Um, it, it's a career that excites so many people. Like mm -hmm. the the opportunity to get involved in something creative and and use your voice and and bring characters to life. Um, yeah. And I, I I've spoken to a lot of people who are very interested in in voice acting. Um, what sort of recommendation would you give to budding voice actors wanting to to try and start out in the industry? Well, I think all of us do different voices around the house. I think we yeah. all kind of goof off with our friends. Do voices, accents, whatever. I think that's always a good thing to just keep in mind how important play is because yeah. you want to be able to just goof around and see what comes out. Um, on the technical side, I, uh, I did every play I could when I was in school. I went to university um, for acting. I have a bachelor's of arts and I went to grad school. I have a master of fine arts in acting. So all of my training comes into play every day in any, mm. any job. And I have so many different voice related jobs, but I use those skills every day. So I think training is really important. Um, at the very least, take a scene class where you're working with a partner and learning how to figure out what your objectives are and, and ways to get them. And so that you're using your skills to make a better scene. And then uh, that also helps your voice because you learn how to create a different character with out of whatever body you have in the moment. And some people also take voiceover classes. Then you can really extend your range and do characters that are so different from what you look like. Uh, I think networking is important. 
because you're meeting people all the time, especially at a convention like Supernova. You meet mm. artists and other actors and you never know who you'll meet that they can need you for something or you can help with, you know, somehow you all can work together and um, kind of elevate each other's projects. Mm. Uh, and then I think for voice acting, you need a good demo, maybe a minute or a minute and a half showcasing what you do best. I have a cartoon, I have a commercial, and I have an audiobook demo. Yep. So that um, people like them to be separated. I think casting directors don't always have a lot of imagination. They like to really see what they're looking for. So if they want audiobooks, they don't always want to listen to your animation reel. <laughs> That's true. I imagine they're very different. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> they are because they're you're using different parts of yourself. But essentially, you're always telling a story. So mm -hmm. you want to get the best thing that can showcase that. So your demo should be, you know, um, I say what you do best, meaning if you do a lot of impressions, put those on. If you do, you want to show range. Uh, I'd like to show from, you know, from a, a tiny baby all the way through a hundred year old person and, and wow. some boys and children and girls and teens and whatever, all the way through. So you want to have all of that in there. So adaptable to be able to, to have a voice that can capture that, that range of ages and, and sort of styles of, of character. Like it, it it's. Yeah incredibly impressive <laughs> oh well thanks but you also i mean part of it is just listening to people and enjoying the people that you're around and just kind of drawing from that because when you create a voice you often have if not looking at the picture in front of you you have someone in mind that you know or the mannerisms mm. that they use physically or vocally and you incorporate all of those things so you you really have to uh, tuck into your uh, imagination a lot mm. to yeah. kind of pull out these characters. And and it must be that drawing upon sort of lived experience like that does help to, to make your performances mm -hmm. seem more believable too. I think so because you're, again, you're playing the moment. So you have to, you have to really just be in it. And that's where you can just get so happy and the next minute be angry and then be crying. And because you're really playing the moment. And so your lived experience, your acting classes, all of that helps you figure out how to hit those points along the way. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that, that's great. I, I realize talking to you, there is so much to, to voice acting like yeah. be, beyond what the, the listener appreciates. We, we get the end product mm. and, and really enjoy it. But the, the amount of effort, the, the knowledge, the training has gone into it. There, there is so much. Well, I would hope so, only because my job is to allow you to just I, I lose yourself in yeah. whatever it is, whether you're listening to a story or playing a video game or watching a mm. cartoon. You just, it works. <laughs> you want, yeah, you want to lose yourself, and then you can connect to the character, and then it does seem more real. And you mm. don't have to think about the voice behind it or all of that. You just, you're just in the experience. Yeah. It, it, feels very very genuine yeah i'm glad <laughs> um that, that's actually it for our our questions um if, if you have a, any other things that you'd like to call out specifically i uh, i mean our 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 readers play a lot of video games uh yeah. and and anime as well is something i i've i've watched a lot of anime myself over the years right. uh, yeah, I'm just working on a lot of different things. I usually post about it on social media so that yep. um, you can, I can let people know what's happening. I'm working on a podcast with my daughter. It's a rewatch of the first season of Pokemon. Oh, but that's not, special. Not a literal where we're not playing the show and watching it, but yep. discussing more of the bigger lessons we've learned. It's called yeah. The Trainer's Guide, and that yep. will be launching soonish. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and then I'm traveling to a lot of conventions. So yes, that's I could exciting. be somewhere near anyone at any point. <laughs> well, I'm very much looking forward to hopefully seeing you around this weekend at, at Supernova. So, yeah, thank um, you. If, if people do want to stay in touch with what you're doing and, yeah. and kind of keep updated, what, what's the best way to do that? Well, I'm on Twitter at the Veronica T, which is T-H-E. And I'm the same on Instagram at the Veronica T. 
Facebook Excellent. is the Veronica Taylor, although I haven't been posting a lot on Facebook lately. But it's all kind of with our social media. Who knows? Who knows if Twitter will be around? But I'm on all of those. I'm on yep. TikTok also, uh, the Veronica T and um, Taylorama Fun. So my Amazing. daughter is doing a lot of things with that. <laughs> yeah. That's great to hear. Now we'll we'll definitely have to keep in touch. And for oh, anyone who who wants to follow you, I'll I'll put all the the links. Uh, okay. in the article as well so Super. thank you yeah, so much you. really appreciate your time today oh, it's been, been, been amazing yeah you're amazing and uh, i'll <laughs> talk too. to you again soon thank you so much thanks